So we uh, we did this first yesterday. So it's the next one. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Mahatseva Dhara Mahavi Mukte Tamo Dhara Myoshita Sanghi Sangam Mahatasthe Samachitta Hupashanta Himaya Vahas Puridam Saramoye Translation It is the verdict of all Shastras and great personalities that service to a pure devotee is the path of liberation. By contrast, association with materialistic people who are attached to material enjoyment and women is the path of darkness. Those who are actually devotees are broad-minded, equal to everyone, and very peaceful. They never become angry and they are friendly to all living entities. <laughs> this is a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam 552. So you see this verse and the previous verses that we discussed are all references to the qualities and characteristics of great personalities. And all of them, all of the verses have been referenced from Srimad Bhagavatam. So this is another one and this one is spoken by Rishabdev uh, when he's speaking instructions to his 100 sons. Rishabdev is the supreme personality of Godhead. Well, this verse is spoken by the Lord Himself in His incarnation as Rishabdev, giving the clear example of those who follow great personalities. And, and there, everything is becomes auspicious for, for achieving the goal of life. The path of liberation is guaranteed. And then we hear about those who are not attached to some, such persons. They're attached to the material world, material enjoyment. Uh, they, they enter into the path of darkness. <laughs> Okay, next verse. Krishna Bhakti Janavulna Vaisa Rusanga Krishna Prima Jame Tenho Pumya Mukha Anga. The root cause of devotional service to Lord Krishna is association with advanced devotees. Even when one's dormant love for Krishna awakens, association with devotees is still most essential. But here we see again, this point is being emphasized verse after verse. Uh, this one is spoken by Krishna Das Kavi Raj Goswami. The word mula means root. The root is the supreme foundation for the object that it is uh, developing. In other words, everything comes from the root. <laughs> So the root of devotional service or the uh, principle that where devotional service springs from is association with advanced devotees. What's, what's the result? One's love for Krishna awakens. And even for those who are ever, even who they've awakened their love already, still this association is most essential. When Lord Che, uh, when uh, Lord Chaitanya was discussing with Ramananda Roy, uh, he had asked Ramananda Roy different questions. 
on devotional service. Lord Chaitanya is playing the part of a student and Ramananda Roy is playing the part of the spiritual master. The roles were switched around because Ra Ramananda Roy was very deep in the knowledge of the principles of pure devotional service. And so Lord Chaitanya used him as a mouthpiece to speak uh, principles on devotional service for the benefit of everyone. And one of the questions he asked uh, Ramananda Roy, what is the greatest unhappiness, greatest unhappiness? And Ramananda Roy immediately replied, the greatest, as far as I know, he said, the greatest unhappiness is not having the association of great devotees. Uh, so here we see that response by Ramananda Roy shows the contrary. Here it's emphasizing the positive. This is most essential. <laughs> if anyone is serious in devotional service, they look for association with the events to move. Those who are not serious and claim to be devotees, but are not interested in association with advanced devotees, are ignorant of the process and cannot, they cannot really advance beyond a certain level. Okay, next verse. Where are we going now? Okay, eighty-four. Okay, Baba Pavargo Brahmato Yada Bajaj Janaschitar Yachuta Satsanga Gamaha Satsanga Moyarhi Daiva Sangato Paravareshe Twasi Jayate Ratihi. Oh, my Lord, oh, infallible Supreme Person. When a person wandering throughout the universes becomes eligible for liberation of material existence, he gets an opportunity to associate with devotees. When he associates with devotees, his attraction for you is awakened. You are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the highest goal of the topmost devotees and the Lord of the universe. So this is a glorification. This is from the 10th Canto. 51st chapter. I believe this verse was spoken by Akura when he's speaking through to uh, Lord Krishna. I believe it's Akura, but I could be wrong. I'm not exactly sure. But obviously, the verse is. Uh, we wander throughout the universes. From the highest planet <laughs> to the material world down to the lowest. The living entity has been traversing the different levels of material existence from, for many millions of lifetimes, sometimes in lower species, sometimes in higher species, sometimes in the middle, getting various bodies and material situations. So it's wandering. We don't know where we're going <laughs> because we don't have any goal in life. We, we, our goal in life is not to go back to Godhead, so we wander. <laughs> when you don't know the actual goal of life, you're wandering around trying to uh, find out by going from place to place, maybe not even trying to find out, but simply trying to enjoy the material energy. And it says here, when this person associates with devotees, his attraction to you, my dear Lord, is awakened. So here again is the key. We cannot uh, minimize or even calculate the greatness of and, and the importance of association with devotees, especially those who are advanced. Mm -hmm. It becomes the foundation 
for everything we do on the path back home, back to Godhead. Verse 85. Ata ayyanti kam shema vrichchimo bhavato nagaha samsadesmin shanardopi satsangam sevadir ninam. O devotees, O you who are free from all sins, let me inquire from you about that which is supremely auspicious for all living entities. Association with pure devotees for even a half a moment in this material world is the greatest treasure for our human society. Wow. Even a, even a half a moment is the greatest treasure for the, for the society of human beings. It's so rare to get association with a pure devotee. <laughs> and so when one gets that opportunity, if one somehow or other doesn't take advantage of it, uh, one is really uh, supremely unfortunate. For some reason, they weren't able to take advantage of it. Therefore, their, their misfortune is the greatest misfortune. It's almost like if you've never been rich, then the idea of poverty is something you sort of, sort of contend with, you live with. But if you've been rich and enjoy the happiness and the facilities that come with having wealth, and then you lose all that, how much more do you suffer afterwards? Now you're poor. So there, there's those who are never rich and poor and those who are poor but haven't been rich before. So this, the association, the opportunity for the association of the devotees is the greatest opportunity to become spiritually enriched to the point of perfection. And one who does not take an advantage of it is the most unfortunate. And what is this advantage even for a half a moment? We have that verse, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha Sarva Shastri Hoy, the love of the Sadhu Sangha Sarva City Hoy, that even a moment's association with a great soul. Uh, Lava Mata is explained in that verse as being one eleventh of a second such that one can be freed from all the reactions of all sinful to activities that one has committed for millions of lifetimes simply by that one Lava Mata association of the pure. It is so powerful. It's practically, it's on the, almost on the level of associating with Krishna directly. <laughs> It is so important. So um, there's this, this verse illustrates. Okay. Verse number 86 is another verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Excuse me. Satam Basangam Mamabiriya Sam Vidom Bhavanti Rikarna Rasayana Kata Tajosi Nat Asva Parvarga Vartmani Strada Ratir Bhatir Nukramishyati. Very important, very powerful verse. The spiritually powerful message of Godhead can be properly discussed only in the society of devotees, and it is greatly pleasing to hear in that association. If one hears from devotees, the way of transcendental experience quickly opens, and gradually one attains from faith that in due course of time develops into attraction and devotion. This verse is spoken by Kapila Dev from the third canto. And then here it says for an explanation, Adi Lila 1.60 is, um, so let's go to that Adi Lila 1.60 to see what the explanation for this verse is to help us take an, a further step in this direction.
So where did you go? <laughs> Runda, are you still with us? Yes, yes, Maharaj. I'm opening that on the other uh, browser. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes. Okay, so here's the verse again. So the purport, let's see what the purport says. This verse appears in Bhagavatam with Kapila Dev replies to the question of his mother Devahuti about the process of devotional service. As one advances in devotional activities, the process becomes progressively clearer and more encouraging. Unless one gets this spiritual encouragement by following the instructions of the spiritual master, it is not possible to make advancement. Therefore, one's development for a taste of a taste for executing these instructions is the test of one's devotional service. Let's read that again. So unless one gets this spiritual encouragement by following the instructions of the spiritual master, it is not possible to make advancement. Therefore, one's development of a taste for executing these instructions is the test of one's devotional service. How eager you are and how much you have developed that desire to follow the instructions of the spiritual master. Initially, one must develop confidence by hearing the science of devotion from a qualified spiritual master. Then he associates with devotees and tries to adopt the means instructed by the spiritual master in his own life. His misgivings and other obstacles are vanquished by his execution of devotional service. Strong attachment for the transcendental service of the Lord develops as he continually continues listening to the message of Godhead. And if he steadily proceeds in this way, he will certainly be elevated to spontaneous love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Well, this verse is very, very powerful. And illustrating that the process of devotional service springs from and develops from this process, the process that's mentioned here. Hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord in the association of other devotees especially advanced devotees. It's very pleasing and very powerful. So in this particular verse, we see uh, some of the characteristics that are indicative of one who is serious in devotional service. Uh, we seek out the association of advanced devotees and we hear from them. We also develop the practice of hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord as our regular daily affair in that association. And that's why Srila Prabhupada said, we have established these temples so devotees can somehow come associate with devotees and hear and chant the glories of the Lord. This is the fast track in back home, back to Godhead. And as one continues, as it says, one will, do, because Krishna's messages are not different than Krishna himself. The glorification of the Supreme Lord and his pastimes, activities, qualities, names are all on the absolute platform. So therefore, by doing these activities, we also are actually associating with Krishna directly through this sound vibration. And when it's done in the association of great souls, we go deeper into the meanings and the importance of hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. And then, we be, then it becomes greatly pleasing. In other words, one becomes happy. It's a process for really becoming happy to associate with and hear and chant the glories of the Lord. And this is this is the essence, Sadhu Sangha, this is the essence of the association with the great souls and with Krishna. Because we associate with Krishna through hearing the message of Krishna in the association of other devotees. This is directly, and then as that attachment awakens, 
Um, he says here, then certainly, Prabhupada uses the word certainly, uh, spontaneous love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead will arise automatically. <laughs> because Krishna is all attractive and we develop our attraction when we hear about him and his activities. And therefore, uh, all of the books that we have that have been presented to us by his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada, are all about hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord and associating with great personalities so we can awaken that love for Krishna, which is the actual, we call that Gupta, it's the treasure of our life. It appears to be hidden, but it's easily found in this uh, atmosphere of hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. We never get tired of this. We have the example of Maharaj Pariksit who heard Srimad Bhagavatam continuously without a break. And that was not just in the daytime, but constantly 24 hours he was listening to the glories of the Lord for seven full days. When he was done listening, he had reached the stage of self-realization he completely understood he was not this body. He had no more attachment for his material body. He was ready to go on to the destination that was given to him, having been cursed to die within these seven, after these seven days, being bitten by a snake bird. He very easily and very readily accepted his destiny as an opportunity to go back home, back to Godhead. The transition to go back home, back to Godhead, uh, includes uh, giving up the material body. For the materialist, that is called death, and it's the most horrible thing they can possibly think of. The fear of death is so strong that people will create so many ways to somehow or other forget about it and defend themselves against it. But for a devotee, Death is simply the opportunity to attain to uh, uh, eternal life, eternal life with Krishna in the spiritual world, which is the perfection of existence and the ultimate principle of knowledge and unlimited happiness. And so, um, so here's the process. If we waste our time in this material world, simply maintaining our families, <laughs> and try to become a good expert at our occupation and simply uh, spend all of our time in that. We have no, then we have no time to hear and chant the glories of the Lord and the association of devotees. And then we are, we are pitiable. We're pitiable by the great souls who say, oh, look, we've given them such a, a great opportunity, but still they cannot take advantage. They are pitiable. So please take the advantage of this and hear and chant the glories of the Lord as much as possible and as many times as you can associate with devotees who are doing this. You will see the difference once you develop that taste. You will run to the, uh, these opportunities every chance it arises. <laughs> this is Krishna consciousness. It is so sweet and so powerful, and here is the essence of that power and sweetness. Sadhu Sangha, uh, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Smarnam, Krishna. Hearing and chanting and remembering about the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is the occupation of the great souls. This is the uh, principle of spiritual uh, perfection <laughs> and ultimate happiness. So uh, we have many examples throughout the scriptures of personalities. We have the sages at Nami Saranya. For thousands of years, they met just discussing the glories of the Lord and the process of pure devotional service. The history of our movement, when we go back to the foundation as it was set up from the time of Krishna onward, we see it all Success is based on hearing and chanting and associating with great personalities about the glories of the Lord.
And Prabhupada said, I have given you so many books. <laughs> now you read them. Now you understand them. Now you distribute them. Now you take advantage of that and become fully Krishna conscious and go back home, back to Godhead. <laughs> Saru Sangha, Saru Sangha, so powerful. Okay, the next verse in the series of verses that we're doing, uh, going back to that chapter, yeah, is really a, a very powerful verse. This verse is spoken by Lord Chaitanya. When he was asked by uh, Sanatan Goswami, what is the first business of a devotee? When one, what is the first business of one who comes to devotional service? Lord Chaitanya answered, Asat Sangha Te Yaga E Vaishnava Achar, Sri Sangha E Es Asadu Krishna Bhakta Ar. A Vaishnava should always avoid the association of ordinary people. Common people are very much materially attached, especially to women. Vaishnavas should also avoid the company of those who are not devotees of Krishna. Mm -hmm. Again, that principle is emphasized, but here in this context of where this verse has been explained, you'll find that what is, what is most important is that uh, Sanatan Goswami is asking Lord Chaitanya, what is the first business of a devotee who comes to spiritual life? This is the answer the Lord gave. One should avoid the association of ordinary people and very much become attached to the association of devotees. Okay, these are some of the principles. Um, this next three verses, which are from the Srimad Bhagavatam, um, I think this describes the 26 quality, no, 26 qualities of a devotee. Again, uh, uh, it's um, I'm not sure of this particular these verses, but it's all about the qualities of a Vaishnava. Yeah, uh, this this will be interesting. We'll use this as a discussion for. Uh, Tomorrow's class, uh, we'll stop here because this requires much discussion on these verses here. Um, so uh, verses 88 through 90, uh, go down the page and let's see where these three verses are from. I'm not sure, it, it'll give a reference here. One, yeah, it's from, oh, oh okay. Is a Kapila Dave speaking to his mother, verses 331, uh, chapter 31, verses 33 to 35. Mm -hmm. Here we go. This one is really, these are the heavy verses about, this, uh, about those who are interested in association with the opposite sex in order to gain material satisfaction and happiness. Okay, we'll stop here. We won't go into these verses. Um, but uh, you can look forward, you can read ahead if you want. But we'll stop here and see if there's any questions or comments based on today's discussion. Thank you so much, Maharaj for today's session. Uh, these are very beautiful verses. Uh, they, are take, um, they are taken from different, different parts of Srimad Bhagavatam and they glorify the association of devotees. So thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. I request okay. devotees, if there are any questions, comments, please go ahead. And we always ask the devotees to become manifested in your uh, apparent form in this lifetime. We like to see who you are and who I'm talking to. <laughs> <laughs> Shri Mad Bhagavatam Ki Jai.
Shamarani, you always have that that TV smile. Thank you very much. <laughs> Vrindavan Nath with his earphones looks like a very great sage who is about to enlighten all of us in deep philosophical principles. Nishinga Leela, Hare Krishna. Do I look any better than yesterday? Nishingalila was explaining to others that Mar 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 Maharaj doesn't look so good. So maybe I maybe I look a little better today. Hopefully. Yeah, you look better. Really. Good. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I need I need some opinions on these different topics. <laughs> I feel a little bit better. Okay, so Sadhu Sangha and Vaishnav uh, uh, discussion. Oh, this is the essence of these, these verses that we just uh, discussed today. Raj Prabhu has raised hand. Prabhuji, please go ahead. Thank you very much, Mataji. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Right, my question is, if how is what is the correct way? How I mean, how do you take association of an advanced devotee? For I wouldn't even be able to recognise an advanced devotee. But say I thought there's a possibility that this person might be an advanced devotee. How do what? How does one go about taking advantage of that and obtaining that association? Mm -hmm. There's a verse that we've been bringing up every once in a while in our discussions. It's from the fourth canto, eighth chapter, verse number thirty-four of Srimad Bhagavatam, where it talks about how to associate with the three levels of devotees: those who are equal to us peers, those who are lesser to us, juniors, and those who are more advanced, seniors. In that verse, it gives to me that one should, one should hear from such persons, one should look for opportunities to serve such persons. These two things are really the focus. When you're in that association, you should be eager to hear from them, and you should also think if the opportunity can arise or try to create the opportunity, let me do some service, offer some service on a personal level. So these are the two ways we, we can appreciate and benefit from the association. But the most important one is to hear from them. And hearing also precludes uh, questions that may arise from the process of hearing. In other words, when you hear carefully, you start getting questions. Just like I notice you, you, you are a very good listener. You're one of the best listeners I've ever seen on my uh, Zoom call. You are always focused on everything I say. And therefore you always have questions and that's good because it shows that you're both interested, but you're showing the actual quality of what it means to ask question it means attentive hearing. When you hear attentively, then generally two things happen. One, questions arise or two, um, you realize what has been said in relationship to your own uh, understanding of Krishna consciousness. There's no question in that category, but you say, oh, yes, now I understand this. A realization comes. So if we're hearing attentively, 
And we, we get one of these two things, either relevant questions or realizations on what is being spoken. If we're not getting either one of them, that means we weren't listening. Thank you so much. So yeah, doesn't mean questions doesn't have to happen every time, but at least we should get some understanding of what is being heard and how it applies to me and how I can take advantage of it also. And then further, if there's a need for clarification and questions are there. Good, thank you, thank you, Maharaj. Or if we just go to the lecture and then someone says to us, uh, Prabhu, Mataji, what did he say? Oh, um, yeah, uh, it was a nice class. <laughs> That's all we got to say. <laughs> what did he say? Well, give me some time, I'll, I'll remember something. <laughs> That means, that means uh, uh, we forgot one of the principles, and that is to keep the mind connected to the sound vibration, which is the prelude to the two principles that we just mentioned. Attentive hearing brings these two other possibilities, one of the two, or both. Very much, Arj. Thank you. Like I gave a class just the other day, and we were just discussing. I think it was with the Charlotte devotees, and one lady said, and we were discussing so many things, and she said, "You know, I'm listening to everything you're saying, but I don't understand any of it." <laughs> that was her statement. So I said, "Thank you. At least you're honest." <laughs> And then we went, then I went into trying to explain some of the ways by which understanding becomes easier and more natural. But yeah, we have to hear attentively. That's the main principle in the association of advanced ability. Advanced means one who knows the science of Krishna and can teach the science of Krishna consciousness. That's how you would judge the advanced, but not by how neat his tilak is or how many folds that his dhoti is so nicely done or how nicely she wears her sari. <laughs> uh, these are not the characteristics of advancement <laughs> or how nice he smiles and how nice he tells everyone, oh, how wonderful you are just to be with you are so wonderful. Um, and please uh, just note my website and we have a special place on the website where you can make a donation. So don't forget that. <laughs> These are the modern day uh, yogis, you know. They don't care what they're given to you. All they care is about what, what they can get by playing the role of a, a devotee. And if you ask them a question, they give you either they, they avoid the question or give you a, an answer that has nothing to do with your question. Is there, a, is there something about they give some instructions that if you follow through, then you can really see the benefit that following through the instructions gives us one immense benefit. And it happens yeah. again and again and again. Yeah, you take what is being heard. If you need some understanding on how to apply it, that, that should, be, should be presented in the form of a question because we might, we have to understand that 
our situation from devotee to devotee might be slightly different in the application. Because um, the application is more individual where the knowledge is general. <laughs> Thank you very much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Mr. Raj. Thank you. We have uh, Vrindavan Nath, and then we have Radhavi Nodini. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, Guru Maharaj, I have, uh, I would say, kind of two questions. One that uh, in all these verses and also in Nectar of Instructions, Nectar of Devotion, it's mentioned on the association. And as you also mentioned that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu highly emphasized on this point, right association, and avoid Sangha with materialistic people or non-devotee. But how this can be applied practically in day-to-day -day life as we are working in office environment with non-devotee. Mm. Uh, because I see one, like practically the way I uh, try to do Guru Maharaj, and I really uh, seeking your uh, direction, please. Uh, I heard in one of the Radha Govind Maharaj uh, lecture long time back, where he said, uh, if we are going to, uh, we start our office uh, work or any uh, job, any work which is non-related to pure devotional things, you have that meditation with Krishna that now I am entering in Agasur mouth. So you please make sure that I, I am in your protection and I don't forget you. And uh, if I forget you uh, because of this materialistic Maya, uh, please remind, uh, create the situation so I don't forget you. So I try to follow that meditation and that really helps me whenever I'm really in difficult situation. I always pray like in my home, in this room, <laughs> when I'm working, Krishna, now I am this complete Agasur Mahut. <laughs> Please come and help me. But otherwise, how to avoid this non-association, uh, Guru Maharaj? Well, we can discuss the principles that make up association and because physical proximity, proximity, in essence, is not the definition of association. Association actually means affection for. We develop affection for the people or the values that they live by, then you are associating with. Um, but in the environment where there is interaction for a particular materialistic goal, the workplace, you find yourself, you know, uh, working very uh, closely with people. And so that prayer that you have mentioned, which is seems to be the, the only way you can save yourself from being swallowed up from that environment, and uh, because Krishna is ultimately the only protector, he gives protection in different ways and through his different energies, but directly he also protects his devotee. As Maharaj says, if, when I'm getting swallowed up, please create a situation where I can again remember you. So yeah, that, that is also... That prayer is, is, I think, essential in order to somehow or other not to get pulled into that materialistic energy. We can't, because becoming a devotee doesn't mean I'm a devotee part-time. There's no such thing as part-time devotee. Devotional life is full-time. It's not part-time. And therefore, even every work, every minute of the waking day is should be in connection with Krishna in one way or another. Even when we have to associate with and perform 
our materialist activities to maintain our body. So um, there is one devotee in our movement who took the trouble of writing a uh, seminar which he gave on how to become Krishna conscious in the workplace. And uh, I have that seminar. I asked him for all the notes and he gave them to me. Um, it's 28 years of working in the and on a job and how he was somehow or other using his intelligence to somehow or other avoid uh, being swallowed up. But using your intelligence is not enough. You have to have Krishna's special protection. <laughs> and you have to pray for that. There's no question about that. So anyone who's interested, I can send that, uh, that file to, uh, uh, I can send it to uh, Srimati. I don't think she's, oh yeah, she's there. I'll send it to Srimati and then from there you can get it. And you can read it over and see if there's some, some uh, points that you could use in your activities in that environment. But if you're working from home, it's a lot easier than being on the job. Yes. You keep pictures of Krishna all over, all around your computer. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj, everywhere in front of me, there are all Krishna pictures. <laughs> Just behind, it's empty. <laughs> You also have that big screen in your living room, which if you put anything on that screen, anybody within the range of miles can see it. It's so, <laughs> new, it's so big. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's always, it's a constant struggle for devotees and uh, not to get swallowed up. I recommend devotees who don't have to work. If you have family, and then you have to work. If you don't have family, you don't have to work, really. But some of us think we like to work. And we kind of hide that behind the idea that, well, I got to do it. But work for Krishna <laughs> and use, use your time in a better way. Yes, Guru Maharaj. I think you shared that uh, document, Working at a Job and Krishna Consciousness uh, in March. So that was really, really helpful, that nine-page document. Yeah, okay. But anyone who doesn't have it, maybe Srimati still has the copy of that. I think I sent it to her. Yes, good Maharaj. I'm searching for it. Um, once I found it, uh, I find it. I will share that, Mataji. I have that. I can share that in case if you oh, want. Okay, so Vrindavan Nath will be the source. I think it's How to Become Krishna Conscious in the Workplace. It's, yeah. I think that's the title of it. Yeah. I think that time you mentioned that also, Guru Maharaj, helped me a lot. Uh, that when we are doing this job, uh, we should take this also as a service and your that statement really really has helped me because when i'm doing this i don't take this now as a material activity i feel now this also is a spiritual activity i'm doing this because i have to manage family and just need to do to, as a service yeah. it's it's a temporary austerity <laughs> Not a lifelong austerity. <laughs> Thanks, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Hare Krishna. Uh, Radhavi Nodini. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Our glory is to Srila Prabhupada and our glory is to you. Hare Krishna. Uh, 
You mentioned that uh, what are the symptoms when we are properly listening to a class. And uh, I just uh, experienced that in my case, uh, it's uh, very, uh, very much dependent on what the class is like, uh, how much I remember, because uh, if I can recognize some kind of uh, structure, how the, the topic of the class is built, built up, then, then I can remember more easily. So what it means that uh, when it's not like that, I'm not properly listening, or, uh, or how could I, I, I remember more of those classes? Because my, my mind or in intelligence works in such a way that, uh, that I, I cannot uh, really remember a bunch of facts, but when I, I see some kind of structure, it's, it's more easy. Easier. Yeah, it's not about, re I, obviously, to remember everything, you'd have to be Shruti Dara. Uh, but the idea is to be able to hear everything. And that means concentrating on the whatever is being said. You may not, but if you concentrate on everything that's being said, there will be points that'll come up. In, in the narration where you'll get realizations or you'll get questions, either one. You may not remember everything, but we should try to carefully listen. Uh, that's called, in that particular um, exercise is called destroying the faults of the mind, which means wherever the mind wanders, bring it back to the sound. Mm. Mm, I see. Yeah, I, I just asked it because uh, you, you mentioned that sometimes it happens that devotees ask us what, uh, what was uh, in the class. And I remember I, I, sometimes I, I participated uh, some class and uh, during the class I, I really listened to it and I, I, I really felt inspired. But lately, well, later I just somehow couldn't really recall uh, it. I just uh, remember the feeling. <laughs> So it was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you can always remember something about the gloves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, OK. I, 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 I will try it. <laughs> I, can, I think the question is really centered around the idea of the topic that's being discussed. The more we are interested in the particular topic, the more the attention becomes stronger. Uh, maybe that that's also also it, but uh, but um, how, how to say it? Really, when 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 I I can understand how uh, how how uh, the speaker got from one point to another, um, I I remember these relations of the parts of the class more. I, I don't know how to express it properly. So when I, I, I really, I, I uh, understand how it's built up. So when the speaker gets from one point to another and, uh, and, and I, I remember the process, how he gets uh, from one to the other. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah, so. But you, you can actually say you get something from every time you hear that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. uh, probably, yes. Even if it's little, then I, I can remember something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Yeah, that verse from the, from the it's from the uh, Padma Purana. It talks about three principles which lead to the fourth. Faith in the speaker, uh, humility, uh, in other words, ability to assimilate what is being said, destroying the faults of the mind, and then with those three come the, the results, either realizations on what has been said or questions on what has been said. Uh, oh, uh, sorry. It it was uh, too much in a little time. Uh, can you can you uh, repeat it? Yeah, it's uh, a, it's I remember. A, that. It's a four point principle that's coming from the Padma Purana on the, the uh, how to acquiesce 
uh, proper hearing. One, faith in the speaker. That what he's saying is he's authorized to speak, in other words. And the topic he's speaking of, you have faith that's, that's there. The second one is humility. That means the ability to absorb what is being said. In other words, not blocking uh, the sound vibration with a with a with a challenging mind, mm -hmm. just hearing submissively. Yeah, probably it's Openly. also about that. I understand that I need to hear and I need to learn. Uh, mm -hmm. Is is it? Well, we can try to understand, but if we're trying to uh, block it by our own interpretation of what is being said, then that destroys the ability to assimilate. Mm -hmm. And then the third is destroying the force of the mind. That means wherever the mind wanders, bring it back. Mm -hmm. And Krishna uh, says that is... in, the, in the Gita also. Oh, Whenever and wherever the mind wanders, bring it back under the control of the self. And this was the third or the fourth? Third. The fourth is the results. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, I, I, I try to remember this. <laughs> Well, I, I, I know you, you're very analytic, and that's very good. You are super analytic, and that is very nice. It's a good quality. But keep the analy analyzation within the range of understanding. And therefore, therefore when you ask questions, you, 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 uh, you act on your analytic intelligence to understand deeper. Yeah. And uh, what it means not to use properly this this quality? Uh, Which one? It's speculation. Or... Which quality? Uh, this uh, an analytic. Uh... Well, analyze it in relationship to how you can, like how you can understand it and benefit from it. Um, how does it apply to me? That's the analysis. Or a clarification of what's being said. That's why, you know, transcendental, you'll see that when someone speaks, they don't speak with references all the time on, from all different angles. They speak more like in PowerPoint presentations. You see, the problem was like that. We speak in PowerPoint. And then that requires unpacking, requires discussion. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the, the that's the that's where questions and answers come. Mm -hmm. It's just sometimes so difficult because there are uh, such uh, uh, such angles of one uh, of a topic which I don't even think about. So I, uh, for example, when Buddha Bhavana Prabhu gives class, uh, he just speak the, speaks the same topic, which I, I heard over and over again, and somehow can give such new angles that I, I didn't even came to my mind. And I was wondering how I could, I could get those because uh, I, I don't even think about those, uh, those questions. So it's so interesting. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know, he's, he's developed that, that art of seeing the principles from different angles of vision. Mm. And that's that's the quality of a, a, of a an advanced devotee. You can see the same principles from different mm. angles of vision. And each one of them are correct from that angle of vision. Mm. And Prophet also talks about that. He said, you can take a verse and you can discuss it from so many angles of vision. Mm. Yeah, I just uh, brought this example because sometimes I have this this uh, feeling that oh, I understand something, and uh, and uh, 
I, I don't even uh, understand how much I don't understand it. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> that's good. That'll help you to understand more. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, I mean, I, I, uh, I don't uh, don't understand this, so it's uh, it would be good <laughs> if I well, let me if I know uh, this. Uh, let me ask you a question. Are, have you given up yet? Uh, given up what? You sound like you you think like well I I can't go beyond a certain point. Can can you go farther than where you are now, or you think well I'm relegated to my particular situation no probably i i i can is just uh... hey <laughs> okay you, you've understood the philosophy okay <laughs> that's the answer i was looking for you don't have to say anything else <laughs> yeah i just i just think that uh, it's not just some kind of uh, intellectual thing this uh, spiritual knowledge so i should I should put more practical effort also to, to get the re realizations. So, uh, so I'm always worried that I'm, a, I'm, I'm a bit too lazy to, to really understand these things. But then choose, mm. along with Prabhupada, choose who you want to hear from. Mm. There's so many speakers out there who are speaking about Prabhupada's, the knowledge that Prabhupada has given from different angles of vision. Mm. See what you, there might be somebody out there who is you, you're really attracted to, who speaks in such a way that things really resonate with you. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I give you that permission. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> but don't go outside of this con. <laughs> No, oh, I, I, I don't want to. <laughs> I definitely don't want to. I remember once I, I read a very short uh, uh, part of uh, another type of Bhagavad Gita, which is not from Srila Prabhupada. And it really, really was a short part. And I was just really amazed how bad it was. <laughs> so so I, it, it was a good, good experience, not, not, uh, not to want to, to go any other. <laughs> I think you were fortunate to choose the right one. If you would have chosen one you really liked, you might have been in trouble. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for your analytical uh, uh, avenue of understanding. It's important, but you can overanalyze too. <laughs> Be careful in that area. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, there's the, yeah, there's just, uh, um, just like um, there was a caterpillar who was dancing. Uh, and he has many legs. And he's dancing so nicely on stage. And so another entity says, wow, Mr. Caterpillar, you dance so nicely. Um, at one point I noticed, do you move your 55th leg to the left or is it the 77th leg? Is it the one that you use? And so he asks a very detailed question about how the caterpillar is dancing. <laughs> the fact that he's dancing, that's fine enough. <laughs> Should, um, Prabhu, please chant Hare Krishna. Yes, I'll chant Hare Krishna when I understand what Hare Krishna is, the benefits of getting the chanting Hare Krishna, the benefits of not chanting Hare Krishna. In other words, I'll chant Hare Krishna after I have 25 of my conditions fulfilled first and then Maybe I'll chant Hare Krishna. That's called an over analytic pool. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. 
So the idea is take it in its essence and practice it and the realizations will come. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Namrata is patiently waiting her turn. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to the Lord. Maharaj, I have one question and one realization. I'll ask the question first. Um, so you mentioned about what is the first business of a devotee when it was asked to uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said Vaishnava should always associate with ordinary people. Oh, sorry, uh, should always avoid association with ordinary people, with women and uh, with materialistic association. So the ordinary people and materialistic uh, uh, people are the same. And I also wanted to ask, here it is mentioned about uh, women. So is there any uh, specific thing that uh, it is told about the woman nature? I'm not talking about no. the feminism here. No, not... it's a clarification that needs. When the scriptures say women, it means the opposite sex. That's what it means. So you'll find, and it's mentioned, uh, for man, woman is woman, and for woman, man is woman. It simply means uh, uh, unauthorized association with the opposite sex for the sake of sense gratification. That's what it means. But in the material world, people chase after the opposite sex as the prime reason for enjoyment in this world. Everything centers around that. That's the whole basis of the material world. If, if soon as, as soon as the, the attraction for men and women break, the whole, the whole material world breaks. <laughs> There's nothing material left. <laughs> That's the whole principle. So that's why it's mentioned, you know, because it's the foundation for material existence. And that's mentioned in the Bhagavatam by Rishabh Dev in the fifth canto. So uh, what Lord Chaitanya is saying is, not if you come to Krishna consciousness, associate with, oh, with devotees, and then you'll make progress in devotional service. Don't associate with ordinary materialistic people. Because association is everything. As we were reading about the importance and the power of association with pure devotees, in the same way, the opposite is also true. The association with and developing a relationship with the non-devotees means it's, you stay within that arena. And stay within that consciousness. Or if you you're in that and you don't like it, you're in a in you're in an aversion mentality. You're constantly adverse to that association. And you can't practice Krishna consciousness when your mind is disturbed. Maharaj, um, it is said that uh, the distressed mind also leads somebody to, you know, uh, take up devotion. Say that again. A distressed mind is also a, a reason for taking up uh, devotion. Yeah, but once you get there, you got to give up the distress. Not that you keep it once you take up devotion. <laughs> It can lead you to devotion, but it's not the mean, mean means for practicing devotion. <laughs> distress is what it is, distress. It can push you, it, it can push you in the right direction, but once you are in the right direction, then distress has no, it has to be given up.
from? Uh, so another thing was, uh, Marag, I wanted to share a realization. I mean, my, my personal experience that I wanted, before a few years, I wanted to read Bhagavad Gita, but I, I made up my mind that I'm not going to uh, uh, read or understand it from any source. I wanted a proper person to make me understand that. So uh, I chose, uh, I uh, in my house there were Gita from other sources also, Bhagavad Gita. But uh, somehow I could not, uh, you know, continue after the first chapter itself. Then uh, I came across a devotee in my family itself and who agreed to, um, you know, uh, uh, explain Bhagavad Gita. So from there, my journey started, I think. And uh, then I caught up with the uh, purpose and uh, I started getting into the detail of it. So that was my first uh, ignition, I, I can say. And then uh, the second ignition was uh, in 2020, uh, I, was, I, was, uh, I was doing a job and I decided to leave my job by the end of the year uh, only I, because uh, I felt that in my office place uh, or maybe in any professional area, there are so much ignorant people around. So I, it was my tough time as well, but I wanted to uh, give my uh, time to Prabhupada's books. So uh, I gave up my job and <laughs> my reason was I just wanted to read Prabhupada's books. Uh, and after that, I think I caught up more. Now you're smiling. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> yeah, it shows that you you were led in the right direction. Nice. You made good decisions and you came to Shield Prabhupada. And Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita has been glorified and has been uh, hailed by some of the top scholars in the world as being the best presentation on the science of Bhagavad Gita. Prabhupada's, yeah, not, it's his, his Bhagavad Gita is not only glorified amongst the devotees, but even among scholars in general. <laughs> And Prabhupada proved the, the efficacy of his Gita by showing how many people came to Krishna consciousness simply by reading his Bhagavad Gita. Yes, Maharaja, I think I'm still reading it. I'm finding it uh, in any exhaustion <laughs> after reading the books, of course. But, so, yeah. It was interesting in a few terms. Continue. This, this process of Krishna consciousness is just unlimited. We have, we're just at the beginning. We're standing on the ocean of devotion and we're still trying to get our toes wet. But there's, there's a grand ocean in front of us that is so vast and so deep with transcendental knowledge and unlimited happiness. So continue, make it, make it a feature, the main feature in your life and you'll see how it opens up so many uh, realizations on the value of life and the purpose of life. Yes, Maharaj, I will, thank you. Thank you very yeah. much. We are not speaking. We're not speaking simply because we're devotees. This is the glorifications of Prabhupada's teachings to the world is an objective glorification. And it's coming from all sectors. What Prabhupada did and who Prabhupada was is amazing. We have still, though, we still don't even have a, a small iota 
Iota, Iota of who Srila Prabhupada is and, and the greatness he, uh, that he exhibited. He's such a great personality, uh, a rare personality, <laughs> a personality who you can't find in Kali Yuga anywhere. <laughs> He's something from the of thousands of years ago, such a great personality. But he presented, he came in the midst of this age of Kali in order to give the highest. And so everything Prabhupada said and did is worth hearing about and understanding. <laughs> Yes, Maharaj, it is. I remember, Maharaj, I, I used to uh, uh, argue with my cousin when she told me about uh, hearing her. I, I used to say, uh, I, I genuinely can't understand what Prabhupada is saying. How will I continue to listen his lectures? And now I am, I think, uh, whenever, even I'm a little sad, I, I just go simply to hear Prabhupada, nothing else. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, Prabhupada was never proven wrong or defeated in any situation and he he was with thousands and thousands of people in various types of venues discussing one on one in groups in seminars in so many ways Prabhupada is, was brilliant not only brilliant from the point of view of Shastra but spiritually brilliant uh, I'll give you an example of his brilliance, which is really a small little thing, but <laughs> it kind of illustrates Prabhupada's really fine intelligence. When Prabhupada was in, uh, he was in London, he was in Bhaktivedanta Mandar in 1973. He was really eager to meet important people and discuss Krishna consciousness with them. So people who were coming, by the arrangement of Shama Sundar, his secretary, was arranging for authors, uh, writers, uh, important personalities, uh, musical uh, heroes within the young generation. So many people came to see Prabhupada. And Prabhupada loved it because he really got into some real good discussions. And some of the people that he spoke with were quite amazing also in and of themselves how much they also knew about spiritual life and that Prabhupada was able to bring that out well, one in one group he was with one group called the Mensa Society the Mensa Society is a, a group of scholars and intellectuals who make it their business to take apart difficult spirit, spiritual and philosophical uh, uh, topics. They choose the difficult ones and they sit and discuss it. And that's, that's their program. It's a discussion. It's, it's, it's more like a Brahminical approach to, to Shastra. So they came to meet Prabhupada. And at one point, Prabhupada was talking about the glories and the all-powerful position of, of Krishna. And uh, at one point, there was a question coming from one of them. And the question was, uh, well, if Krishna is all-powerful, as you say he is, can he create a rock he can't lift? Well, think about the question. Can he create a rock he can't lift? So you see, it's a very tricky question. If you say yes, that means you, um, uh, you minimize his lifting power. And if you say no, you minimize his creating power. So how did Prabhupada answer that question? <laughs> Prabhupada said, yes, Krishna can create a rock he can't lift, and then he'll lift it. First, he'll, he'll, he'll create it, and then he'll create the power to lift it afterwards. 
So think about the answer. You know, no one can, and people try to fool and trick Srila Prabhupada so many times with questions. But Prabhupada could, could see through everything and answer in the most convincing way everything in relationship to Krishna consciousness. Uh, Prabhupada was a genius. He was not just a great spiritual personality, he was a philosophical genius along with being a great devotee of the Lord. You'll see that people, there's some people who have a lot of devotion, but they don't have a lot of knowledge. And others have a lot of knowledge, but they don't have a lot of devotion. But Prabhupada is Bhakti Vedanta. Bhakti and Vedanta together. That knowledge and devotion in one place. And that was Srila Prabhupada. And he was constantly battling with material questions and answers, probably. And you'll see, if you listen to Prabhupada's discussions, how his answers are the most amazing. You can't even conceive of how he'll answer or respond to a situation. You can't sit, you can't sick, sick and guess and sit there and think, well, Prabhupada's gonna speak like, no. He always has a way to answer that is so unique and so right to the point and so connected with the person who's asking or challenging, that is perfect. perfect. So when you know more and more about Srila Prabhupada and his spiritual and philosophical qualities, you can understand that what he's presented <laughs> is the highest, it's the best. He was best in both of those characters, in, in devotion and in, and in knowledge also. Uh, that, and, and when we listen to Prabhupada and read his books, it's amazing. When people just read his books for the first time and say, this is what I'm looking for. This is where I want to be. <laughs> And Bhagavad Gita is one of his masterpieces. Bhagavad Gita is truly a masterpiece. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. So much we can say about the glories of Srila Prabhupada. And uh, there is much more than what we actually know. Uh, he's, 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 he's attracted people who have no attraction for anything <laughs> and became devotees of Krishna simply by coming in contact with Srila Prabhupada. Their whole life was changed. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Raj Prabhu, you had another question. I saw your your yellow you, hand Raj. was up in the air. Uh, I, I wanted to ask because earlier you were saying that obviously we need to try and avoid or limit association with ordinary or materialistic people. And I remember you specifically said that that association comes from developing affection for an ordinary or materialistic person. But then, for example, in, in the workplace and many other aspects of life, we deal with many people, we spend time with many ordinary or materialistic people. And naturally, without any effort, we develop affection for them. And in the workplace, that affection actually because we're all independent interdependent on getting the jobs done that affection actually helps you to do your job and also because you have affection for them you want to bring them closer to krishna even if they're not even if they're not interested but they're not against it you think oh i still have a chance so what is the right thing to do do you should 
I don't even know if you can if, cut off or break affection or if you can deal with it in a way where you can still try and introduce them to Krishna slowly and subtly but not have it impact your own thoughts yeah that takes that's an art you have to do that you have to know your own position and know where they're at and how to bring them to where you want them to come that you have to see by observing the situation what about that individual will be attractive to them in, in krishna consciousness and you can use your interaction and work as a way to uh, connect, to make that connection. But the, day, the danger is that you get attracted to them and their values that they, that they hold. That's, that's where the affection comes from. That. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. You, you have to be able to fish and not fall into the water. <laughs> Catch the big fish without being pulled into the water. Okay, that's helpful. I think once I found that I was falling into the water and then I broke that connection, but in a nice way. Good. Well, at least you were able to see that. That's good. Don't jeopardize your own Krishna consciousness, but if you can bring others in, then that's the best. Thank you, Marge. Uh, Maharaj, yes, there is one question in the chat by okay. Narsingha Leela Mataji. But she's also uh -huh. saying Narsingha Leela Dasi. Oh, okay. But she's also saying if it's too late, we can skip the question. Do you have time, Maharaj? Is that okay? Yeah, for me, time is open. I, I don't have anything coming up after this, so... Okay, so I will read the question. Mm -hmm. She says, Dear Guru Maharaj, how to act when we are in a situation where we work with devotees and somehow or other they are in some way provoke you and even humiliate you and when you try to explain what is going on, they don't understand because of their emotional wounds. Is it better to just tolerate because I can say for myself that I wasn't that much advanced. Or is there any win-win solution? Thank you very much. That's, that, that's a very difficult situation to be in. Um, but part of your question, you included, well, even when you try to explain your situation, because of their emotional situation, there is no, no, no receptivity on, on their part. So better you just drop it at that point and, <coughs> and leave it alone. <coughs> Go back to it later, maybe, in a better time. Yeah, there has to be some, some communication. There's no communication. Better to distance yourself from that. But you can also understand that, you know, maybe I can learn from what is being directed towards me. Is there something about me and I can gain from? Can I become more humble in this situation? Can I learn something about myself that maybe I don't see? There's another way of taking advantage of that. But that doesn't mean you stay in that association. You can pull back from that and reflect on, the, on what happened in terms of where you can possibly gain from that. As for a devotee who's serious 
actively practicing Krishna consciousness, they can gain from any situation. When Krishna puts a devotee into an awkward situation, there is some benefit that can be derived from that. We have to be able to see that. Part of seeing that is also praying to Krishna. You know, what's happening? What can I learn from this? Or how do I react to this situation? But if communication has broken down, best to just withdraw from that and reflect on the situation and see where you can benefit from it. Or in some cases, sometimes you just, but there's another thing, and this is another possibility. I don't want to give you too many options because you'll get confused. <laughs> uh, another thing is, Sometimes people just have personality conflicts. It has nothing to do with the issue. It's just the personalities just somehow don't mesh together. And because of that, there is, is some uh, uh, this is some difficulty doing things together or some reason to criticize or something. Um, the individual situations are always reflected on so many different factors, but ultimately taking shelter of Krishna is always the, the factor that seems to help us to accept the situation or really to, or to deal with the situation. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we find ourselves in association with someone we don't really want to be in association with, and these, these things happen. <laughs> You're very soft and very, uh, very intelligent and very soft, and, and, but there are people around you who are very what we say, determined to act in the way they want to act, <laughs> despite the fact that <laughs> they're not flexible. When you get into, into association with people who are not flexible in making the association happen, you want to give, avoid that if you can. Mm -hmm. I almost think I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and I can even see the person you're talking about, too. <laughs> but I won't say anything. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just the way it is, you know. We all have that, we all have that experience. When we meet something or some situation, it's just impossible to be in there. You just, you know. I'll pull back from it. Thank you very much. This really helps. And maybe now, maybe three months later, I can see what I should um, change in my character, in my acting. Yeah, now, now is like opening. Um, me. A devotee is always is, devotee is introspective to see what they can learn from whatever situation they find themselves in. Thank you very much. My obeisances to you. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Like today, someone came uh, to bring me two items. And so... Uh, they came, and they came from Croatia to bring two items to here in Slovenia. And they gave me one, and I was really happy. But then I noticed that's all they brought. I said, well, what happened to the other one you were supposed to do? Oh. 
I forgot. <laughs> so I thought I could say, well, yeah, yeah, you just shouldn't have forgotten, you know, you should have wrote it down or something. But I didn't think like that. I thought Krishna just didn't want me to have it. And so when I thought Krishna didn't want me to have it, I thought, that's fine. So yeah, we have to look like we have to sometimes, you know, reflect. Um, Krishna sometimes, you know, uses people to fulfill our desires or to frustrate our desires. <laughs> and now that I look at it in that situation today, I thought, I'm so glad, I'm so glad they forgot. <laughs> I didn't really want it. I didn't really need it anyway. <laughs> it's a little thing, but still, it's a way of reflecting. Okay. So, devotees, anyone else has any any other question or realizations to share? Uh, if Suda has her hand, is that a hand from Suda over there? Uh, oh, Suda. Oh, no, uh, no, good, no, no, no. Thank you so much for the very nice class. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. Or oh, that's a hand that's stuck in that section of the of the computer okay i can ask one question whoever's in that section you do have a question i can ask one question about uh, association uh, mm -hmm. association with the devotee and also associate books it's like it's same like does it give some say that again uh, association with uh, devotees and association with jilla Prabhupada books uh, does it give like a same benefit? It's same or like uh... both are beneficial. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're in a place where but, you have a one moment's association with a pure devotee, and that's enough to take you to the path of perfection. Mm -hmm. And that's we were reading that today in the in the in the verses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we can associate with Prabhupada now by associating with his devotees, because his devotees represent Prabhupada. Well, we can say, you know, some do. Mm -hmm. okay, yes, yeah. Because sometimes, like, if we are not in a place where we don't have the association of uh, um, uh, advanced devotees, that case, like if you take an association of Srila books, still. Yeah. And Prabhupada also said that if you want to associate with me when I, after I leave, I mean, my books, read my books. Okay. That's direct also, it's not indirect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. This knowledge is alive. It's not just some words on paper. It's living, living knowledge. It's alive. It's actually a person. Okay. So, anyone else? Do we have? Okay. We can stop here. Um, just one note uh, for Srimati. Um, you still there, Srimati? 
I see your name. Yes. Yeah, okay. Glory to God. Two points to note. One is tomorrow. I may not make it for the class because it's the Sunday feast. And then usually I give the lecture and it takes me right up to the time. To, and I wind up uh, getting involved with other things once I'm there. It's not so I'll have someone ready to give tomorrow's class. <laughs> And then on January 16th, which is a week from tomorrow, um, the devotee is from Central Jersey in the United States, have uh, organized the program and will be speaking on that. And it's at 8 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, which is uh, 1 p.m. Uh, uh, UK time and 2 p.m. Uh, Central European time, and that's from that's from 8 to 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on January 2nd, 16th. The topic is still unknown yet. And that's a week from tomorrow. Sure, good match. Sure, definitely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj, Thanks. for your time and association and answering to all our questions. Thank you. I'm happy to do it because this is the thing that keeps me alive every day is to be with all of you and speak something philosophical, even though it requires some clarification. <laughs> Thank you and have a nice day for those of you who are beginning, for those of us like me who are ending, um, have a nice evening and for Namrata, sleep well. <laughs> She's ready to end the day. <laughs> it's what yes, time yeah. is, it? is it 11 o'clock there now, right? 11 p.m.? It's, it's about to be 11 p.m. tomorrow. 11 p.m. Wow, you are amazing. How many people would stay up to 11 at night just to listen to me? <laughs> it, it, it's, I think it's worth uh, uh, waiting for a long time if, if, if the prize is the transcendental talks from you. So I, I do it. Well, I hope you do. Dream about Krishna. <laughs> okay, thank you, and we'll see you all. Um, I'll try to be here tomorrow. It's very, very unlikely I'll make it. It's just the way the Sunday feast is here. It just keeps going. Uh, but uh, if not, we'll see you on Monday. Thank you very much. All well, glories to Shiva Prabhupada. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.